Hello and welcome to Learning Git. In our last section, we saw how to initialize a repository, make commits, and manage remotes. Today we will begin our third section where we'll learn some features we can use to work collaboratively on a team. By the end of this section, you should understand what a remote tracking branch is and how it's used to get updates from your remotes. For the first video in this section, we'll look specifically at branching and forking. After a brief overview of branching, we'll see how to create a new upstream branch based on master. Then we'll see forking in action, as well as tracking upstream changes from the new fork. The Git repository is made up of different branches of code that all originate from the master branch. A branch is often made to contain the work for an isolated feature. For the feature to be included in a deployed version of the project, the branch needs to be merged back into the master branch, as shown in this diagram. In our last section, we watched our friend Zach create a repository for his new application, make some commits, and push to GitHub. So far, Zach has been working all alone, but he's been looking for collaborators for a new feature he wants to implement, and has finally gotten lucky and found Sarah, a developer from overseas who's interested in taking the lead. Before Sarah can get started, though, she'll need a place to submit her work to. In order to keep her work isolated from other submissions to the master branch, Zach is going to create a new branch on his local machine and push it upstream. This is where Sarah's work will be accumulated until it's ready to be merged into the master branch. One way to create a new local branch is with the git branch command, followed by the branch name as the only argument. Zach will call this branch my awesome feature. Since we're currently on the master branch, this will actually create an exact copy of master on Zach's local machine. All that's left to do now is push it to the remote so that it will be available to other users. We do this with the git push command. The first argument to this command is the name of the remote, origin, and the second argument is the name of the branch we want to push, my awesome feature. So we submit that, and we see the output in the terminal verifying that our branch has been pushed. Now the new branch of code has been submitted to the remote and should be visible on GitHub. And you can see that the new branch is here in the branches dropdown, my awesome feature, ready for some new submissions. At this point, Zach has a couple different options for letting Sarah contribute. One way is to name her as a collaborator, giving her right access to the repository. This can be done on the settings page. On the top left, we see a link that says collaborators. When we click this, we see a search box where you can type in Sarah's name. And there she is. So when we click add collaborator, Sarah now shows up on the list. But Zach has some major security concerns with this approach. He doesn't know Sarah, and giving her right access could be a risk. As we'll see in later videos, Git gives you the power to completely rewrite history and erase all traces of the project. Keys to your main repo should be given with great discretion. For now, he's going to remove her from this list. Fortunately, Git allows us another way. You may recall mention of Git's forking workflow from the first section of the course. Git allows other users to make their own online copies of a repository called forks. This way, other contributors can make changes to their own repo and then submit the new commits in a pull request to the original branch, where the changes can be reviewed at the maintainer's discretion. All Zach has to do is make sure Sarah has the link to his repository, and the rest is up to her. Before Sarah can begin working, she'll need to make a fork of the repository, which is really easy to do. Here on the right hand side we find a fork button, and when we click it, it will create an exact copy of this repo and place it in Sarah's GitHub account. Let's give it a try. And it's finished. Now that Sarah has the repository online, she'll need to clone it to her local machine with the git clone command. First we'll copy the clone URL, which can be found on the right side of the screen. Then we'll use the git clone command. This command takes the clone URL as the only argument. Now she has an exact copy of her fork on her local machine, but Sarah also wants to be able to keep her work in sync with Zach's upstream repository. To do this, Sarah adds Zach's repo as another remote, allowing her to pull down any new commits that Zach may make to Sarah's feature branch. She'll do this with git remote add. First we'll need to grab Zach's clone URL. We'll head back to Zach's repository, grab his clone URL, and now we'll use it as an argument to git remote add. This command takes the name that we want to use for the remote and the clone URL as arguments. 
So we'll call this remote upstream, paste in the URL, and that's it. Get remote show should verify that we've added the upstream remote. Now she has her own fork of the code where she can submit her work and a link to the upstream repository so she can stay synchronized. She's now ready to contribute. In our next video, we'll see more specifically how Sarah makes use of the upstream link to keep her work synchronized with her collaborators.